Welcome friends to another 40k video. Today we draw on a labyrinth by Richard Ford and look at the renegade marine chapter, the Sons of Malice. What is the labyrinth? What is a renegade's reward for serving Malice? Friends, let's find out. We open with Genarius, proving he's a better fighter than Invictus with his chainsword. Both are in service to the Sons of Malice. They have captured many slaves to be sacrificed to please their god. They fly towards a long dead imperial ship, dubbed the Labyrinth. It must be found every century to honour their chapter blood rites. It was sacred ground for Invictus and his brothers, a home away from home. Their planet, Skellis, had been defiled by the Astartes. They would drop other things to make this appointed time. Inside the ship is decorated with pillars and gargoyles, and now only one deity was offered reverence in this cold empty vessel, the exalted Malice, the renegade god, the outcast, Malice the lost, hierarch of anarchy and terror, he would soon be fed. All chapter brothers were gathered and were covered in gore from the feasting, and they and Invictus had all gorged themselves on the loyalist marine they had captured, feeding for the glory of Malice. Little was left, and the victim had not cried out. Lord Cathal was here, at one end of the hall. He spoke to them, Brothers. Cathal's voice was deep and resonant, bringing the hall all the way to its high, dark ceiling. Malice is truly honoured this night. We have raised to him a thousand souls in agony and terror. It is fitting that we offer him such a bounteous sacrifice in preparation for our coming crusade. He and his brothers are told they must prove themselves in the labyrinth to be worthy of their mission to reclaim their homeworld, to join the doomed ones. Malice's sept of holy warriors. Invictus and others volunteered, until the volunteers reached twenty warriors. They are told they are all equal within the labyrinth. At the end of it, it's a portal. Any who step through will receive the benediction of Malice. The rest will receive oblivion. The volunteers step inside, gather what weapons they can and travel until they reach six doors. The forces are split, and Invictus leads one group through one door. Generous the other. We follow Invictus. As they move along, they can hear a tapping within the walls that grew more intense the further they delved into the shell of the dead ship. It was as though the noise were following their route along the arterial passageways. They are attacked, and something roars from the dark with huge arms and a slavering mouth. The group fired. Their attacker falls. And after that, they examined the corpse. It was large, and like no Xenos Invictus had ever seen. The body bore obvious marks of mutation, as though the creature had been exposed to the warp. Its fangs were bared from a lipless maw, and its dead eyes stared blankly, bereft of pupils. The skin was hard like leather, and its body was covered with open sores, exuding a weird, musky scent, and it bore the symbol of malice. Perhaps some danger he has put in the labyrinth here, to test his volunteers. As they continued, several brothers fell. They enter a room and Invictus realises, too late, it has the same scent as their attackers from earlier. Soon after, the enemy piles in and Invictus struggles to stay alive with one. He falls into one of the holes in the ground. He lives, but his attacker has been impaled by a girder. How fortunate. He finds one of his battle brothers down there. He bears the mark of malice, but his skin and face were marred with sores. He warns that once a single marine goes through the portal, the rest are damned to remain in the labyrinth. He says he will slowly change into one of those creatures, and as a mercy, Invictus ends the life of his warped brother. He moves on and finds several other sons of malice still fighting the mutants. Invictus suggests they go around this area, and they withdraw, and go out an airlock, locking the mutants inside. Invictus tells them the fate that awaits them if they don't pass through the portal. As he's about to go back into the ship, after walking along the outside of it, holding onto a handrail, the handrail begins to pull away. It is Moloch, a brother of his, that is behind him. They both race to get to safety. Invictus gets hold of the door and pulls off the railing, sending Moloch into the void, then gets securely inside. The brothers question how Moloch didn't survive, and the tunnel dipped as they carried on. Drawing them ever downward, as though into the abyss itself, the water became deeper. Then a brother is attacked, and tentacles are all around them. They fight through, and then a blast-hatched doorway begins to close, perhaps trapping them in there. 
three get through whilst the fourth holds the door open and they hurry to the portal. The passageway gradually turned and widened into a dark hall, deep shadows cloistering it on either side. Great statues rose upwards from the dark ancient sentinels that lined the hall, but Invictus paid them no heed. The overhead was a much more majestic sight. A great portal stood at the far end of the massive chamber, fulgurating blue discs dancing up and down its length, tempting Invictus, beckoning him ever closer. But between he and it was the sprinting form of Agon, way ahead, ready to claim the prize that was rightfully his. Just then, his chance is lost as a warped mutant leaps up and kills Agon, and then attacks Invictus and the last brother. Four massive limbs carried its great bulk forward. It was a mass of flesh and steel, metal plates cauterized to a body of seething blubber. Two great claws reached out to the fore and clacked together menacingly but it was the head that was the most hideous, a twisted, bloated replica of a face that might once have been human, but was now so savage and malign, it was almost unrecognisable. It begs to be let out, and Victor's fights with Generius to finish it off. First, Generius throws his flame at its mouth, then Victor's explodes it with a shot from his gun, the final shot. Generius then talks about how both of them will fight together. Brothers, it's the way it should be. It will be fought upon, the kinship between them fought in many battles. Invictus then says he is sorry, and says he does have another round in his gun, and kills his brother Renegade, and goes through the portal. Lord Caloth approaches him, accompanied by some huge caskets, and Victus feels uneasy. Cathal says he has proven himself, and that he can now join the Doom Ones, the glory that he wanted from the beginning. Librarians surround Invictus, and they chant a dark language. The caskets were positioned around him, and the seals were opened. Ten silent warriors lay inside there, bodies healthy, their minds gone. He told he's the final warrior needed, the final champion. Their crusade to retake their homeworld can now begin. Nothing can stand in their way with the aid of malice. Invictus, looking down, saw runes and an eldritch light lifting his head to the ceiling. Through the shadows he could see the outline of something huge, something that stared down with baleful eyes, something wicked in the dark. He screamed, screamed for the pain that engulfed his body, screamed for the terror in the depths of his soul. But no amount of screaming would halt the ritual now. It began to descend, pulling with it. The dark and the pain, Invictus raised his voice in a last cry, as his flesh began to flay from his bones. As his body was consumed, he realised that not even the kindly release of oblivion could save him now. Then there was silence. The light had consumed all eleven champions and destroyed their bodies, and only the revenant of malice remained, and here he stood, gazing with eyes of fire. The renegade god, the outcast, the lost, hierarch of anarchy, and terror, malice. And on that note, I will end today's video. I think we definitely need a sequel to this great little short story to see the revenge malice can bring and for the Renegade chapter to reclaim their homeworld. I really like how Invictus seems pretty honourable earlier on, killing the brother that's been hurt and warped by the ship. And then you slowly see that his ambition outpaces the brotherhood that he showed earlier on and the grim 40k style fate that he suffers at the end feels very horror movie like i think it's great right guys i'll see you in the next video